The reason Elon Musk and SpaceX are investing so much in building the Starship is so that they can build the equivalent of the Union Pacific Railroad, but for space. The Union Pacific Railroad connected the east and west coasts of America, and it opened up trade and created more settlements on the west coast. Elon Musk says that this is what the Starship is being built for, to act as a railroad to space, which will open up the space economy, creating settlements on the Moon and Mars. Could it be as soon as 2022 that we see the first long-range Starship mission? And how soon will we get to see Starship making test flights, taking Starlink satellites into orbit? In this video, we take a close look at the Starship, looking at how much it is costing SpaceX to build, and we see its size and power. But more importantly, we will look at what it is capable of. Will it help build the new International Space Station? Or could it be a space station just by itself because of its large size? And what else will the Starship be able to carry into space? How many Starships will there be? And what missions has it already been signed up for? And what is its current status? How far along is SpaceX in building and testing the Starship? And when could we see it in action? Let's take a quick look at the costs and then the different parts that make up the Starship. NASA invested $450 million per launch for the shuttle, while SpaceX's Falcon 9 cost between $50 and $62 million. But Elon Musk has said that the cost of a Starship launch could be as low as $2 million. The Starship is the first rocket system to be 100% reusable and built from the ground up by SpaceX engineers to be reused a thousand times. It will be able to land itself back on a landing pad, be rapidly reused like how a plane is able to land, refuel, load up, and fly again, and can be refueled while out in orbit. Elon Musk wants to be building a hundred starships a year. And all of this brings down the cost and investment of launching the rocket, allowing for more cargo and people to be transported into space. Musk has said that the investment to test, research, and develop the whole Starship project will cost close to two or three billion dollars. Let's quickly break down the different parts of the rocket. The Starship is part of a rocket system. The top section of the whole rocket system is where the Starship sits. It is the second stage, and its role is to carry cargo or passengers to space, other planets, and in between cities here on Earth. There are two configurations, one for crewed missions and one for cargo, just like airplanes. The bottom part of the rocket system, or the first stage, is what powers the whole system for the first part of the launch. It is called the Super Heavy Booster, and it is made up of rockets and a large fuel tank which holds over twice the amount of propellant as the Starship that is on top. The Super Heavy Booster shoots the whole rocket into orbit, before disconnecting and landing back on Earth while the Starship continues its journey with its own smaller fuel tank and rockets. For Starship's longer journeys, such as going to the Moon or Mars, the Super Heavy booster will return to Earth and be refueled. Another Starship without windows will be placed on top and act as another tanker. This will then go into orbit and be full of nothing but fuel and then refuel the first Starship, giving it enough fuel to make its long journey just like a fighter plane that refuels in the air from a large tanker plane. Refueling in orbit allows the Starship to transport a larger payload of up to 100 tons all the way to Mars. The Starship will be able to help build space settlements and space stations. This is because of its power and size. The Starship system will be the most powerful rocket that has ever flown, meaning it will be able to carry the most amount of stuff. The Saturn V rocket that carried humans to the moon is the most powerful rocket in history, as it carried 48.6 metric tons to the moon. The Starship, along with orbital refueling, will be able to take 150 tons to the moon. That is 100 tons more than the Saturn V rocket. And going to Mars, the Starship can carry about 100 metric tons. Compare that to the 2020 Mars Perseverance rover, which was on a rocket that could carry a payload of just 4 to 8 tons. The area of the Starship that can hold humans or cargo, called the payload fairing, is 59 feet in height and 30 feet in diameter. When the Starship is used to carry passengers from one city on Earth to another, it could carry up to a thousand people at a time. 
Elon said this would happen if it is filled with only seats and has no toilets, pilot area, or food galley. When it comes to going to other planets, Elon Musk has said that the final Starship could be capable of carrying up to 100 people. So what will the Starship be capable of? What sort of things will it help build in space and on other planets? We have already seen SpaceX send astronauts to the International Space Station. Would the Starship also be needed to go to the ISS? Being so large, the Starship could end up being its own space station. SpaceX has proposed using the Starship for transporting demonstration spacecrafts that would be attached or integrated with the Starship and would carry out experiments and missions and then return to Earth. In our other video about how origami is helping build the future, we talked about how a large space rocket such as Starship would be able to transport large space telescopes and large inflatable structures. Space telescopes are getting larger, but are limited to the size of the rocket that can launch them. Starship will allow for much larger space telescopes and starshades, and this results in better views of faraway planets. Astronomers are then able to study distant planets to see if there is life or if the planets could be habitable for humans. And instead of building solid structures in space, inflatable ones could be used, making it faster to build in space since fewer launches are needed to transport materials. One inflatable module has been attached to the ISS in the past, but a larger rocket such as Starship will be able to carry much larger inflatable space structures one that is even twice the size of the current International Space Station. Musk has also talked about using the Starship for transporting passengers from one city to another on Earth, being able to go anywhere around the world in under an hour. And Elon says that Earth-to-Earth -Earth test flights might be in two or three years. In the long term, SpaceX plans to build a city of the future on Mars. Elon tweeted that a thousand starships will be needed, as this will allow for a million tons to be transported to Mars over 20 years. As the orbits of Earth and Mars only align every two years, this could mean that a large number of starships will be leaving Earth's orbit together every two years. In the short term, the goal is to use Starship for an unmanned mission to Mars in 2022 and a passenger mission in 2024. But before this Mars city happens, a moon base would be built first. Here are some of the first major missions a Starship could undertake. When it comes to launching Starlink satellites, SpaceX can fit 60 into a Falcon 9 launch. With a Starship, they will be able to fit 400 according to SpaceX's COO and President Gwyn Shotwell. The most satellites launched from a single rocket is 104 by the India Space Research Organization. Starlink launches would be a low-risk way of doing many test flights and a way for SpaceX to earn money before Starship is used for passenger missions. There is the goal to start building a permanent base on the moon, and spaceships are needed to transport the building blocks. NASA has a program called Artemis with the goal of returning humans to the moon by 2024. There will be a station called Gateway that will orbit around the moon much like how the ISS orbits around Earth and rocket ships are needed to shuttle astronauts between the gateway and the moon's surface multiple times. NASA has chosen three companies to develop this rocket ship shuttle. SpaceX is one of the companies that received funding from NASA in April 2020 to further develop their lunar landing system. A version of Starship called the Starship Human Landing System is designed to stay working on the moon, transporting astronauts back and forth to the gateway. And because it will stay on the moon, this version of Starship will not have a heat shield or air brakes which are normally used for coming back to Earth. The first private lunar mission, called Dear Moon, is looking to launch as soon as 2023, and it will take artists, sculptors, and architects and fly them around the moon. They will be able to come back and use their experience to create new works here on Earth. But that's not all. Elon Musk has tweeted about the next-gen Starship that will be 18 meters in diameter, which is twice in diameter of the current 9-meter Starship. An 18-meter Starship would have about four times the internal space as the already large 9-meter Starship. What would such a large rocket be able to transport into space? With all this talk about what the Starship will be able to do and achieve, the question right now is how far along is SpaceX in building it? The first test flight was in April 2019, and a total of five test flights have been completed. 
three of the most recent prototypes and test flights have reached up to 150 meters, while the next prototype, which is looking to launch later in 2020, is aiming to reach 20 kilometers. Elon Musk has said that the first orbital tests and cargo flight will probably happen in 2021. Elon Musk is a person who keeps pushing for faster and faster progress, saying that if a design is taking too long to build, then the design is wrong. This is the reason he scrapped the whole Starship design when it was being built in carbon fiber and switched to the steel design we see today. So as Elon Musk pushes for faster progress with his eye on building a city of the future on Mars, we could see the Starship in action as soon as 2021. On the next episode of Venture City, we take a look at Elon Musk, the scientist behind the CEO, and try to understand his scientific thinking and way of life that fuels his businesses. Hit the subscribe and thumbs up button to not miss a video.